Major oil consumers are more and more nervous about whether or not the oil supply will grow in order to meet this very, very high and rising demand. The tragedy is that both India and China basically deserve to have a middle class. And it's really an irony that we basically used up so much of the world's great oil supply when the oil consumers were limited to Europe, North America, and Japan. You're not going to get into any trouble, are you? With whom? The Alaskans are happy to take the cash. The only people who care about us drilling live thousands of miles away. And they think you're strangling the planet with your bare hands. They still drive cars and have central heating. Yes, 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 but they don't make their money destroying America's last wilderness. Somebody has got to keep the lights on. Somebody has got to visit my parents. At least that's not me. K-News, Radio AM 970 Business Latest. Air fare is up, Dow Jones down. Travelers are in for a rough ride as two more budget airlines go bust today. What will happen to America's sense of national identity when it becomes very expensive to go from one part of the country to another? What will happen to families like mine that are spread across the country that depend on access to very cheap, very plentiful transportation to maintain connections? I made you some brownies. Hi, Mom. There's enough to feed the neighborhood. <laughs> Oh. The last wilderness in America. And this is the first well to be drilled there, and it's my well. I mean, the field looks huge. There might be four billion barrels of oil in there. You hungry? I had breakfast on the plane. That's a million barrels of oil a day for the next 15 years. America might start to meet its own energy needs. See what you think of this. <laughs> 165 gallons of diesel fuel. Where from? <laughs> Does mom know? She thinks I paid for it. Well, what if you get caught? Hey, nobody tells me when or how far to drive my car. It's not personal, Dad. There's a fuel crisis. Look, if I want to sit in my chair like always instead of waiting in line for gas, or if I want to pick up my daughter at the airport, like always, I'll do it. Now, what's wrong with that? What John does here is uh, very much in keeping with how people usually respond to these sorts of crises. John's been brought up in 40 years of kind of an individualistic consumer society where people are used to be able to fix things themselves rather than having to rely on the community to help them out. The search for oil is much, much more difficult than most people think it is. Even with all of our computers and seismic surveys and geophysics and whatnot, all that we know is, is there a reservoir there? But until you actually go out with a rig and drill, just like we did in Texas in the 19th century, we don't know if there's actually oil in that reservoir. There's a great deal of gambling on spending millions and tens of millions and sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars to find out what's actually in your reservoir. Prospecting is a very, very difficult process and a very risky process and one where the bulk of opportunities, even with modern technology, are not what you think they are to begin with. The logs so far have been excellent. We're ahead of schedule. Shame there have been no oil shows yet. Yeah, you bet. Did you bring me some chocolate? Do you remember Paul, our geo steerer? No chocolate. But you can have this. I prefer them in pairs. <laughs> You're arrived, then. You'll be pleased to hear we're sharing a bed. I'm delighted, as long as we're not both in it at the same time.
shortage of oil gets created when demand exceeds supply and therefore you use up the last remaining inventory on the shelf and the shortage creates hoarding which creates more shortage it's a very vicious spiral Here. We'll hit it. We won't be in my tolerance zone. The drill will turn of its own accord. I think we're going to hit a fault zone and miss the target. It's fine. And end up sidetracking. If you really think that, let's call a meeting. When? We don't need a meeting. Later this afternoon. Then stop the drilling, because we'll be so far off course, it'll be impossible to correct the angle. All right. Let's have the meeting now. So now all that's left is oil that's very politically difficult to get to, oil that's very, very expensive to produce. And that's a massive challenge for the energy industry. And more broadly, it's a massive challenge for consuming country governments who need to provide this oil to their populations to maintain the economic growth that is the basis of their legitimacy. We're going to miss it. Because you've given me a 50 meter sweet spot to hit a reservoir the size of Lake Titicaca. I've mapped the area. It's very complex. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be successful. It's not like getting laid. If this reservoir is as big as you say, I can stick it anywhere. If that's your attitude, you can stick it straight. This is not helping. This well is my responsibility. Can we step back, please? If we hit a fault zone, we'll have an ambiguous result. I've been doing this for 25 years. This well is costing us $36 million. Which is why I want to hit the target. I steer the drill bit. We need to correct the angle. That's my job. How far out are we, Jess? Big feet, because any old hole will do you. Okay. We should be here. Then let's work out the correction. The oil isn't going to run out in the sense that one day we wake up and there's no more oil. But as the economy grows, as demand for oil grows, particularly as the economies in the developing world grow, we need more and more oil. So the oil doesn't run out. What happens is the oil market can't grow. As the price of oil goes up under an oil shock, effectively the price would go through $100 a barrel. The people in suburbs, especially in American cities such as those of Minneapolis, would find that there is a drastic change to everyday life. Uh, just going and collecting your shopping, for example, would be a costly activity. Let me get your bag from the trunk, Denise. Hey, we drove them to the supermarket last week. They should drive us this week. When do we get to burn some of their fuel? The vast majority of American communities could never work without cars. This whole system will have to be reorganized in order to live in a world without readily available oil. And remember, save today with K News AM 970. The only station to bring you Gas Watch. Updates every 15 minutes on those all important gas prices and lines. Denise and Mike are at the cigarette counter. Weather update. High today, 36. Overnight low, 24. Tomorrow, bright and sunny, but rain's on the way.